I'm out tired, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so tonight I have the privilege of bringing the word and uh, Bishop asked me Friday, oh, thank you. This will be easy, I don't feel nervous or anything, this is great. Bishop asked me on Friday, I was like, Jason, what do he goes, what are you doing on uh, Wednesday? I said, I've been coming on Wednesday, Bishop. He was like, no, 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 what are you doing this Wednesday? I was like, oh, I'm, I'll be here. And then he's like, how's your summer looking? What are you doing? I, I'm a teacher, so I get the summers off. I'm like, I'm great, I'm just chilling at home with Jeremiah, I might do a little VBS. He goes, great, I want you to teach on Wednesday. I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks, Bishop. So this, I really want to thank him for trusting me with the pulpit. And I actually wanted to come down just because I feel like up there is just so formal and it's just me right now, so I figured it'd be good to just connect with you guys down here, if that's all right. All right, so tonight, I want to talk a little bit and continue in the vein of what Bishop's been preaching in our church. The last couple of weeks, he's been talking about the Christ in us, right? And we know in Colossians 1.27, it says that the Christ in us is the hope of glory, and glory is basically the manifestation of God's presence, the manifestation of God's presence. So what that means, that could be any type of attribute of God, whether it's his love, whether it's his strength, whether it's his power, his peace, his joy, anything, any attribute of God, that's what the glory is. And so once we accept Jesus into our lives, we, 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 we get his spirit in us. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So once we accept salvation, once we accept him into our hearts, that's what we get. And yet, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. In Ephesians 3, it says that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God is supposed to be revealed. And so the whole idea of Christianity, I believe, is yes, God coming in our hearts and working through us, but Christ wants that glory to come out. Amen? Like, he wants that glory. He wants... He wants what's inside of us to come out and touch the world. So what I want to do, what I entitled this message was releasing the Christ in you. We're going to talk about what that looks like and how, that, how we do that. So if you can, can you turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1? How fitting. My son's name is Jeremiah. Who was thinking that? I feel like Pastor Mike was thinking that. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter... <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. It says this. The word of the Lord came to me saying, and this is Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. This is the part I love. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. We know that God has plans for our lives. It's so obvious, and, and it's right here in his word. God called Jeremiah, and I really feel like we have, call, we have a call in our lives, but we don't have just, like, one big call. I feel like we have multiple callings. I think one of the misconceptions in Christianity is that we think there's this big thing I'm supposed to accomplish, and I don't think it's true. I think as a, as, as a person, as a man, I have a calling to be a husband. I have a calling to be a father. I have a calling to be a son. I have a calling to be a teacher. I have a calling to be a minister. Calling to be a praise and worship. I have so many callings, right? And you do too. You guys do too. And sometimes we hear the call of God in our lives and we feel a stirring to accomplish that thing. Do you guys feel that? You ever have like a stirring in your heart for, to accomplish something. And, and when, we feel, when we hear that call, we can do one of three things. The first thing we can do is we can shrink back. That tends to be what I do. <laughs> I shrink back because of human limitations. Here in Jeremiah, what was his, what was his reason for not, wanting, for not being used by God? He was too young. How many times do we go, oh, God, I would do that, but... I'm just not as smart as he is, so I can't do that. Or, man, I would love to do that, but I don't have the charisma. 
I don't have the personality to kind of do that. I, I, I joke around with Lee, and I'm like, Lee, you're so witty. I wish I had, like, half as much wit as you. Like, sometimes he says stuff, and I get the joke, like, after his rebuttal. <laughs> I'm like, dang, Lee. I wish I had that. But sometimes we look at our limitations, and we go, I can't do it. Sometimes we're reminded of our sin. And we feel like God can't use us. But let me tell you something. That's a lie. And we're going to crush that lie tonight because the enemy, that's how he's been trying to get us from the beginning, is trying to trick us out of our identity and all that stuff. And we have to remind him that God places his treasure in jars of clay. He, we are jars of clay. He, play, he sets his treasure in jars of clay. I think about all, that's going, all that goes into building a house. When you have a when you're building a house, right? You have the blueprint, and the, you have someone just figuring out what they want that house to look like. Our dream house would probably have like three car garage, probably have like five bedrooms, a spiral staircase. Like I can picture it now, right? I like brick, nice big brick colonial, right? And so after that person creates that that picture in their minds, they draw it out. Then they hire the personnel for it. Then they, build, then they break the ground. They put the foundation in. They add all that stuff to it. They, they put up the electrical wires. They, you guys get the picture, right? They do all that, and that house is there to stay. Nobody's taking that house and moving it to Kansas. Right? No one's taking that house. And it's the same thing with the gifts that God has placed within us. The Bible says that his gifts are without reproach. His gifts are irrevocable. They're without repentance. And so once your gifts are inside of you, whether you decide to use your gifts for the glory of God or not, they're in you. And don't let the enemy try to trick you out of accomplishing God's will for your life because you make mistakes. Because I am what I am here because of the grace of God and by his blood. It's not because I've done it right my whole life because that's not true at all. But that's, that's so we can't discredit ourselves because of that. The second thing that we do, sometimes when God calls us, we might run away from it. And the, or the second thing we might do is just run full steam ahead and, with, and we forget about God, right? We might, we might get so excited out of zeal. And we're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then God's like, dude, where are you going? I'm right here. You can't do it without me. Without me, you can do nothing. I'm the vine. You're the branch. You're here. I'm here. You got to be with me. And so even sometimes out of pride, we try to accomplish things for God. Some people are, like, really smart. Some people are really good-looking. Some people have whatever it takes, right? And they try to accomplish it on themselves, on their, on their own. But I love this scripture in Galatians chapter 3. It says this, verses 2 and 3. You can write it down. I'm not going to be there long. But it says, did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the spirit, are you trying to finish by means of the flesh? We cannot accomplish the will of God without him. And so we, we have to, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what I was thinking? The, these two reasons have to do with self. Both of those reasons, whether you're on one end of the spectrum and you're, and you're feeling like you can do it without, with, without them, or you're on the other side where you're feeling insignificant at all points here. And I feel like we're actually, it's not supposed to be that way. If you're looking inward, it's to look at Christ that's in you, the hope of glory to help you accomplish those things in your life. And so instead of keeping our eyes inward, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. We have to trust that he's writing, not even that he's writing, he's already finished the, our story. Because the Bible says that he knows the end of a thing before the beginning of a thing. So the third thing we might do when we hear the call of God, the first is we might shrink. The second is we might just run after it. The third one is you humbly answer the call with the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's where I want to be. He has to be our strength. David, I love David so much. David said this. He said, in your strength, in Psalm 18, verse 29, I can crush an army with my God and I can scale a wall. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ 
who gives me the strength. Each person is unique, and Christ flows through you. He flows through each person differently, and it looks, it looks different, but it's still beautiful. I think about how we can even be up here speaking, and God will flow through me differently than he would have passed through Mike or through a Lee or through my dad. The Bible, this is my dad. No, it's funny. Sometimes I meet people, and, I'm, and they're like, oh, Pastor Thomas is your dad? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, so everybody, this is my dad, right? <laughs> That's so funny. Because we're so dark-skinned. That's why. Just <laughs> so... <laughs> So it's the same Christ, but it's a different vessel, all right? If God has opened the door for you to be somewhere, then the gifts that are within you are necessary for that environment. You have to know and you have to believe that. You have to believe that. So you might ask yourself, all right, Jason, I get it. I know that I have a call on my life, but how, how do I accomplish? How do I release that Christ within me to, to, to achieve that call? The first thing you have to do is this. You have to walk in obedience to him and just say yes. Can you do me a favor? Can you turn to Luke chapter 1, verses 26? Verse 26. You there? All right. It says this, verse 26, chapter 1. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with the child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. But how will this be, Mary asked, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, was, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. That's what it is. Her obedience opened the way for salvation to all people. A little girl's 13-year-old, yes. Look at what the repercussions were from her obedience. And there are times where in my life I'm like, man, God, I know it's tough right now, or I know that I might not understand, but I'm going to say yes. I actually, I'm a teacher, and I, was, I used to teach in Hamden for a couple of years, and um, I was actually doing really well there. And then I just felt like, all right, it's time to go. It's time to do something else. And so I actually just accepted a position in Bridgeport. Um, and I'll start there in August. And so I didn't, I'm like, all right, I know nothing against Bridgeport. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm in Hamden and moving to Bridgeport. All right, what's the purpose? What's the plan? And all I know was there was a wide open door for me to go there, a wide open door. I actually... Um, I, I was able to get more pay for this position. I was able to have a brand new, I have two classrooms, two brand new classrooms, all this technology. It's like God is, it's a brand new school. It's like God has really placed me there for a reason. And I don't know what it is yet, but all I know is, is I'm saying yes to whatever it is. And that's a step to releasing the, the, the Christ that's in me. Because all I have to be, I'm kind of moving away from my notes, but all I have to, all you have to be is at the right place at the right time when God wants to flow through you. That's how you release the Christ in you. It's being obedient to his call. It's being obedient to his leading. The second way we allow, we release the Christ in us, 
outside of our obedience is by using our faith. I love this scripture, Psalm 86, verse 10. It says, open up your mouth and I will fill it. There are so many times where even I come up here on a Sunday morning and I don't know like what I'm supposed to say, but I feel his spirit stirring. And, he, I, and I've, I've used that scripture in my own life and I just open up my mouth and he just gives you things to say. There are times when like when I'm praying at home and I'll just, I'll feel led to pray over a certain thing, over a certain person. And like you can, you ever feel like when the, when you really, like you ever feel the Holy Spirit really pray through you and you know, you're like, wow, <laughs> that was awesome. It was like a roller coaster ride. That's, that's, that's what, at least that's what happens to me is I, I can kind of tell when it's not me. And all I do is just open up my mouth. Some of you guys, all you need to be is at like a, at a town meeting and just be there. And God's saying, open up your mouth. I'll give you what to say. Some of you guys need to be at a PTA meeting and just sit there. And then when the Holy Spirit stirs your heart to say something to improve the school's climate, you could say that. Or some of you might have to go to your family's function. You might, maybe some of you have been like um, avoiding certain family members for years or months or whatever. And God's saying that was good for a time, but now it's time to reestablish relationship. And now, even though you may have an attitude with him or even though you may feel like things aren't, as, aren't, aren't what they used to be, I still need you to be there and bring my kingdom with me, bring my kingdom with you. And all you need to do, you don't have to figure out what to say. You don't, because in and of ourselves, we'll probably mess it up every single time, right? But with Christ really flowing through us, all we literally need to do is be obedient, get to that place, get to that house, get to that function, and just say, "All right, God, whatever you want to say." And then as conversations happen, is that you know when the door is open, right? When the door is open. You enter right into that thing, and God gives you exactly what you need to say at the right time. This was true. I told this story before, but one time I went to this party. Um, I, uh, okay. I went, to, <laughs> I went to this party, and, and um, I was actually trying to minister to somebody at the party. And uh, it, it's true, but I did. I was, I was there at the party trying to minister to someone. Well, you want to know this whole story. The whole story is funny. This was a DJ from KISS 95.7. I met him somewhere, and he was like, oh. I brought him to my school, actually, to do a talent show. And I was like, oh, you should come to, come to our school. And then he invited me to his house. He's like, I'm going to have this industry party. You should come. And I'm like, oh, great. So I go, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to go and try to, like, you know, minister to him, bring him to church. So then he goes, um, all right, Jason, let's play beer pong. <laughs> I'm like, I don't drink. And he's like, no, just play beer pong. If you miss, I'll drink yours. I'm like, okay. So... We were, I'm at his house playing beer pong. I beat him. The, he was supposed to come to church that, the next day. Did he come? No. But God opened up an opportunity at that party for me to speak to a friend of his. And I, was, I remember just eating whatever I was eating. And he came up to me and said something. And we, had, we started a conversation. And basically, he ended up telling me that he had, like, heart issues. And, um, like, he always had this thing since he was a child. And he, they had surgery after surgery after surgery. But he always just had this condition. And I remember praying for him at that party. And I can't say he got healed that day, but I just prayed. And then I, I left. And so then what's funny was, like, that Monday, I got a phone call from, like, a, a weird number. And it was that person I prayed for. And he was like, wow, thank you so much for praying for me. You, it was like you brought church to me. It was really cool. And he thanked me for it. So in that moment, all I did I'm releasing, the, I'm releasing the Christ in me. All I did was go to this party, and I was trying to, I was literally there with good intentions. And then I'm here thinking one thing, and God's saying, no, I want you to actually speak here and bring me my light here. And so how many of us have places we need to go, have, have phone calls we might need to make, and really reestablish relationship and bring the, the, the light of Christ to them? I know I might make a couple phone calls. I might make a few. I said this before, but it has less to do with, Lord, how do I do it? And more with, like, God, where do I go? Because all we have to do is let our light shine so that men can see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. So I want to, like, demystify releasing the glory and just say, go wherever you go, 
be filled with the Holy Spirit and let him lead you and guide you into conversations and things like that. And your lives will be transformed. From, and not only your life is transformed, but then you start to transform other people's lives. Amen? And so what I want to do is this. Hey, Brother Joe, can you put me in F, please? Thank you. This is so great having a keyboard player. <laughs> I want to do this. I want us to pray. And because I'm basically done. And what's good about this is I can flow into worship, so we got time. <laughs> so I, what I want to do is I want us to pray. And can everyone, if you can, could you just bow your heads? Lord, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we, we know that all we have to do is just say yes. And all we have to do is just walk by faith and not by sight. And so, Lord, we just pray right now for your presence and your power to flow through us like never before, God. Holy Spirit, we need you in such a greater way, in a greater measure. And so, Lord, we ask that you would pour it out right now in the name of Jesus. And so while you're still praying, I just want to open up the opportunity for people, if they haven't received Christ, to receive him. You might be saying, man, I want to be able to, to release Christ in me, but I don't have him in me yet. And if there's anybody here, well, now could be the time. If that's you, if you've never accepted Jesus in your heart, would you mind just raising your hand and we'll just pray right here. might be saying, all right, I want to release the, the Christ in me, but I feel like I'm on empty. And so, Lord, we just pray right now for those people who want an infilling of the Holy Spirit in a greater measure. So if that's you, if you want a, a refilling, whether it's for the first time or whether it's for the 20th time, would you mind standing up? Ephesians 3, as we're praying, Ephesians 3 says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how high, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses the knowledge and that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Lord, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you for your presence and your spirit that's available to us, Lord, without measure. Lord, we're tapped into a whole other realm that has unlimited resources for us. Not so that we can hoard it, but so we can give it away. So, Lord, I pray for those people Lord, who, who have stood up, God, who want more of your spirit. Lord, I pray that you would fill them right now in the name of Jesus afresh. Lord, we can't do this life without you. Lord, we can't live supernaturally if it's without you. And so, God, I thank you right now. It's not something that we have to try to work up, but Lord, it's something that we can freely receive. And so, Holy Spirit, I just pray that as we lift our hands right now in this place, God, that you would pour out your spirit.
that we would be able to find ourselves in rooms that we never had imagined speaking for your kingdom. Lord, that we would find ourselves, Lord, in offices that we never imagined, Lord, speaking for your kingdom. Lord, that we will find ourselves in homes or in stores, God, with, filled with boldness, speaking for your kingdom. 